For this part of the tutorial, I'm actually going to be dyeing the roots of the wig black using Sharpie. Um, whenever you do between the wefts, it will basically just be the same as whenever you're sewing them in. You separate them with clips and then you do the roots. And for the top of the wig, it'll be a little more difficult pulling up sections and dyeing it and probably putting them in ponytails and separating it. But I'm just going to demonstrate how you would start this and how to do it, I guess. Um, so to get a good gradient, we're going to have the wig be slightly damp, you have to have a square bottle for that, and using your fingers, kind of rub it upwards away from the wig. I suggest wearing gloves, which I'll probably go get in a second. We're going to do it throughout the whole wig, just up about an inch. Let's give it axle look. Gloves. We have Sharpies. I bought four Sharpies just for this purpose. We'll see where that takes us. If we need more, we need more. We'll start off, I'm going to start at the top. First, I'm going to slightly dampen the whole area and then I'm going to comb it all through. Make sure your wig is completely secured down, which apparently mine is not. Just start at the crown, I guess. Pull up some hair. Since it's slightly damp, it'll also help it stay up, which is nice. No, we don't want to just look, make this look blocky or anything, so we're just going to do slight strokes upward. I will take pictures to put in this video too, because you probably can't see it as well as I can. <clears throat> And what I'm doing is I'm kind of smudging it up with my fingers, which is why we need the gloves really too. Make sure you get within the little piece you pulled up and not just on the outside of it. And make sure your wig's not too wet because then the marker won't even go on it and it'll just be retarded. have this piece done. I'm not sure how well you can see that. I will take photos. Uh, I didn't get quite all the way down. You want it to be the darkest at the very root and then slowly get a little less dark and turn into just the red. So I'm going to do that throughout the whole thing. Okay, that part's basically done. So you're just going to take that and pin it off in some way. I'm just going to... I don't really feel like getting out a bunch of itty bitty hair pins or ponytail holders, so I'm just going to roll it and then pin it to itself with my straight clips. So it's like that. And I'm going to do that all over the top. Alright, so I got this solid piece. Everything within it has been dyed. And I'm just taking about pieces about this big 
and I'm running my Sharpie on the both sides of it and then I'm just adding it to this clip. Once this clip's too big to hold much more, I'm going to actually get a ponytail holder and I'm going to combine it all into that. Right now I'm only focusing on the frizzed up part of the wig, like where you can't see the wefts. It's just frizz underneath it. So I'm just going to go all the way around. You'll be able to feel the difference in your own wig. The wefts start about like right here. And everything above this is what we're working with right now. And the front and everything, just pulling it all back and probably into several ponytail holders but you can see the darkness another good reason doing this rather than just buying a wig that has black roots is you can make this as subtle as you want or as prominent as you want i want it to be more subtle and short not super long ugh, dark wefts or anything <laughs> Make sure whenever you damp it, you don't damp it very much at all. It mainly just helps separate the hair better. You can stand it up on its own whenever it's slightly wet. And it keeps it separated for the rest of the group. You're not wetting it to smudge it necessarily. You're wetting it to keep it separated. If you wet it very much at all towards the root, whenever you try to sharpie it, it'll just make your sharpie not work anymore. So be careful about that. Anyway, I'm really bad at clarifying things, but I'm trying. Alright, so here is one ponytail completely full of dyed hair. I took a picture, but the lighting makes it look a lot more harsh than it actually is. It's actually pretty subtle for the most part. But, yeah, it's just the roots. Okay, so I really can't talk well because I'm sick and I really shouldn't be recording, but sometimes there's nothing else to do when you're sick and you get bored. So what I did is I pinned all this hair down that's below the fabric patch up here that doesn't have weft tracks through it. I pinned all the hair down that has wefts because I'm going to be working with that and doing one layer at a time. But right now I'm still working on this upper mess. It has a lot of crinkly hair at the base. You gotta make sure you dye that really well. Um, you can see I don't have all these outer ponytails done. It's just there to pin it up. And I'm working from right here right now. So in the end it'll look just about the same as this. I'm gonna put them all back in the ponytails after they're dyed. But this is just to keep it separated so it won't be a tangly mess. I also put it in a ponytail for convenience. And yeah, it looks ridiculous, but just die until you get all that done. And just keep it in the ponytails. Alright, so I finished the dyeing of the top part. <clears throat> Sorry. And I'm going to remove the ponytail holders. Because I want to see how it looks all together. And I'm going to brush it all together just to see what it looks like. And the other part's still sectioned off so we don't got to worry about that. Just don't accidentally comb up the bottom section. Because we're going to be putting this back up in ponytail holders. Whenever we work on the bottom. <clears throat> God, I sound awful. I can only imagine how I sound on camera. Okay, I couldn't find my tripod to try to film me taking it out, but it's out now. <clears throat> Fuck. If you did it right, you should just have really natural looking darker roots. If you separate the hair, you can see it. So whenever they form into spikes, you'll be able to see it more. This method can also be used for characters that actually have roots in their hair, like Titus from Final Fantasy X. If you want to do something similar, do a blonde wig for him so he'll have roots. Uh, okay, so that's what it looks like on the top. Now I'm going to show you how to start on 
the bottom part. All right, I'm sounding as normal as I possibly can right now. I'm trying to clear my throat, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna take each weft and we're gonna do the same thing we did up there, but just straight across about that much above and jagged short strokes with the Sharpie, taking small sections about like that at a time. And yeah, after you get like this part of a section of left done, you'll move on right beside it and pin up another section and go all the way around. Once that's up, you will flip this up and put it with the rest of the hair that's on the top. So I'll go ahead and do a row and show you. Okay, so this is a weft I sewed in. So it stops about right here on that side and right here on this side, but it doesn't really matter. Just doing that throughout the whole thing. And since it's so thin, since there's only one weft, when you flip it on the reverse side, it'll be mostly covered with black as well. But you could also flip it up and make sure you coat the underside the same. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this up and put it in clips. And as I go down with each weft, I'm just going to add the wefts to that clip. So I'm just going to go ahead and clip it up right now and show that real briefly. So that's that whole layer pinned up. So I'll just start doing layer after layer of weft after weft and adding them into these clips each time I do a layer. And if the clips begin to get too heavy, you can put them in ponytails instead. Um, I'm just using clips for now because it's easier to not have to take the ponytail in and out each time. Alright, so I got it all put in ponytail holders and all of it is dyed at Recruit Snow. So I'm going to go ahead and take all of it out and brush it out and show you how it looks like in the end. Alright, it's all done now. And you can't really tell or see it. And that's kind of the point. But whenever you part it, you can see it. And when you pull this back, you can see it really well. So, the point is, whenever you pull it back into spikes, you're going to be able to see it pretty good. And it's going to look pretty awesome. I'll post some pictures so you can see it better. So, that's the finished dye job for the axle wig. I hope it was helpful. Um, something you can do if you think it's too intense for what you want, you can actually just wash your whole wig in like Dawn dish soap. You might want to condition it too, but it'll kind of take out a little bit of the Sharpie. It's also good to do that so that it won't leak on your head or melt off or anything. But I really don't think it will with this kind of style since it's going to be fully spiked everywhere. That's all I have to say. Part 3 will come out after I'm feeling better. And actually checking what I'm supposed to be doing and researching online. I'm actually going to be doing the spiking before I do the realistic hairline. So part three will be full styling and spiking. Thanks for watching. I hope it was helpful.